with the red and then with the light that is almost close to time for. Nowadays, they have changed a lot uh, in the sport. Uh, the jumpers know that they need a dressage, so they have also the dressage trainer coming once a week between shows. It's, it's common, it's, it's, it's not... Um, but I think on the lower level, I think they, they decide to be a jumping rider, they don't need a dressage, that's the problem. So, if I can say something, they need really to ride without stirrups, they really need to have control over the seat and how they ride. Uh, from from young age, um, so at least once a week they have control with a good trainer that they, how they sit and how they influence on the horse. Um, but on the higher level, I think it's it's uh, normal that they, they have a dressage trainer. In every landing, he's stealing the race, take the race over. In every landing, we have to understand the animal, but we st still have to have have basics and not do the horses too special too early. So we have to understand how to collect the horse, that we use that in the shoulder in, we start with shoulder in, we use your inside leg to the outside rein, and that, that must happen. It's not that any horse cannot take that. We, we have to, ABC we have to do, and uh, it's not, it's not just from here, it's all over the world that we have to, to ride with less hands and for your seat and for your leg to the hand, not like the other way around. Transitions, what is a good transition? From uh, slower trot to quicker trot or from trot to walk or from canter to walk or canter to trot, whatever. You can do a million transitions, you don't need to see all of them. But that, that, the feeling that the rider doesn't just traveling around, that they can change a little bit, it doesn't need to be black and white, it doesn't need to be fast from, to really close and collect, because that also is not good for the horses, uh, for the legs and for the mind. So more with feeling, but really transitions, because it's, it's, there's about riding. Um, you can never do too many. We talked a lot about this, uh, we, we use a lot of poles. Uh, uh, some horses are too hot and they get, and they're also too careful and they get just tensed from it. Then you can walk over them. You can always, I said, <coughs> we can use all these exercises, but if you feel that you get too much tension from it, then you can maybe do it in walk and trot, just to have the rela relaxation. That is really important. Um, we can be too ambitious sometimes to build up a lot of exercises, but when the, if the horse gets too tense, then you have to use your hands to hold him, then, then it's game over. So it's better to do less. I say less is more. And then I think we should jump on a big circle to see that the horse is round the leg on left and right, and so they are can land on the right front foot and use the left outside hind leg. So we make the horse strong in the both hind legs. Uh, and we also have to practice to really ride straight on the, on, on, the, on the line and rhythm, that we use the rhythm. So we don't play so much with the speed, we keep the rhythm um, and the steady contact. It sounds simple, but it's also difficult, I know, but, but I don't think, sometimes I know myself, I am ambitious, I put up some fences, I have a plan, but I maybe use the half of it on the, on the training because we, we have to stay with the basics. It's not good enough and then we're repeating and so on. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so my, my, my tips to the trainer is to, to keep it simple, but simple is not, and, and also a relaxed horse, but for sure don't misunderstand because the relaxed horse has not to be too relaxed so he doesn't react. He has to react and he has to be on small age. I always say like an iPhone, you, you, you just do like this and you change the picture. That is the way a little bit of riding, not like, oh, I have to do this and now it changed. It has to be like this. Not that, that you just think about the thing, but a little bit that, that, that how much I have to do or how less I have to do, that is important. If, if a, horse, a horse invites you to get strong back, no thanks. If a horse invites you to push more because he doesn't respect your leg, no thanks. You have to react. 
and that's up to the rider a little bit. The poles is, um, yesterday we had six meters, six meters, six meters, we just trot to make them straight and then we did canter to make them straight and keep the canters, uh, the right canter if it was in the right canter and, and the opposite on the left. Today I did it a little bit more difficult. I have a seven and a half and six and a half and five and a half and four, uh, now five, uh, to just see how much hands do they need to, to make them sit. And then the horses was not used to it, it could go forward, but then when the rider melt down in the horse and closed the hands and gave the leg a little bit, then the horse doesn't understand to sit. And that comes from the dressage, but I want to do it because then we see, maybe we have a problem, but we actually was winning something. We could take that uh, not success to make success. Um, and then it, it's all again with, with transitions. Um, everyone can pull back, everyone can kick, but that is more cowboy, it's not riding. So how much do I need to have my horse waiting? And um, yeah, that I did. And then we did the line, it's 18 meters, um, four strides to Oxer, four strides with a corridor to make them straight. And uh, teach the rider, because that line is quite common that they come too slow, they have to open up the oxer and that they have to pull back really strong to get the distance. So they learn to ride into the line and make, make the horses jump a little bit, sit over the oxer and then over the hind leg and then move up and have space. But they did a really good job. I had really two good days, long days, good, uh, but good days.